So codependency, right? This is one of those terms that gets thrown around a ton. Pop psychology nowadays, social media, it gets kind of overused, um, used out of context. To me, it feels a little bit like the word narcissist, like everybody's a narcissist now. Um, everything is toxic, everything is gaslighting. You know, there's these terms that have, have clinical meaning that somehow now are used for everything. This person disagrees with me, so clearly they're a narcissist, you know? Um, but when it comes to the term codependency, I will say that I tend to view it slightly different than a lot of clinicians out there. And this is kind of a flag that I, I'm, I wave pretty strongly. Um, What's your definition? So we, as a society, are highly codependent. We are raised to believe that love equals codependency. Um, you complete me. We, I lose myself in you. I can't exist without a couple dumb, you know, without a partner. Um, the, the idea of being an autonomous being within a relationship is not really valued, right? Um, Esther Perel talks a lot about how when we left the village and we became these kind of nuclear families, it's like all of my attention, expectations, and needs now resides on one person, right? You have to be the village, you have to be my lover, my best friend, my confidant, my, par my parenting part, all the things on one person, right? Not realistic. No one person can be everything, right? But it's also a little bit of a confusing term because what does it really mean, right? It also gets used a lot in like weird contexts. So the way that I describe codependency is really simply this. If you're good, I'm good. If you're not good, I'm not good. Meaning my emotional sense of self, sense of value, sense of worth, my emotional regulation is all based outside of myself. It's not based in here, it's based out there, right? Now there's a lot of behaviors that manifest from codependent tendencies or codependent kind of uh, ways of relating, but that to me is kind of the, the most clear way to look at it. And it's pretty broad, right? When you think about it like that, you're like, oh shit, that a lot is codependent. Yeah, a lot is codependent. When, when she says, uh, if you're not good, I'm not good, I'm like, oh, that's hot. That's romantic, yeah. <laughs> that's, you know? Um, and, and, but you wanna is, go down with me kind of thing. Yeah, right? and uh, I learned uh, after my divorce that I'll give you my hand, but not my life, um, which is not sexy because I, like everyone else, grew up uh, watching movies where, yeah, you get married. If I go down, you, we're going down together. You know, we're one one person. And I and I don't know also how much of that is cultural. There's a cultural you know? component for sure. Yeah, but there's 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 that piece. More too. collectivistic cultures, not to interrupt yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the Asian cultures, South American cultures. We have yeah. to also take it into account that there is a cultural component to this. Yeah. And I just have to say it because one culture's version of boundaries, like what does that mean when you have intergenerational, you know, you've got family members from different generations living in one household and like what's the structure and what, it has to be spoken to, <clears throat> it has to be said. I'm not gonna be able to articulate all the nuance, but I just wanna call it out because it is an important component. Yeah, um, if my dad was still here, a boundary, <coughs> a boundary to him would be you don't love me. Yeah. You know, right. So. Right. Um, now, how it affects our relationships, right? I mean, clearly, if you were to say, if you're not good, I'm not good, we can see how that can affect a relationship, right? But it really does, remember I said that term earlier, like we expect people to be like these needs meeting machines. It's like this constant desire that like, if I'm not okay in me, you need to be doing something to help me be okay in me, right? So it takes a lot of the ownership off of us and puts it outside of us, right? My emotional state, if it's not based in me, it's based out there, which means I have no control over it. It means it's, it's on somebody else, right? It puts us in a bit of a victim state. So it's a loss of empowerment, really, right? Um, it is a long and arduous process to recover from. I'll let you know when I get there. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to ever like recover completely. Um, but you know, it's not just like the wives of alcoholic husbands anymore. It's a different understanding that we have now. You know, I mean, yeah, that still, that still pertains, but it's a lot more about where do I end and you begin. And not in a hyper-independent way, because hyper-independence is really just the other side of the same coin as codependence. It's still I'm finding my sense of self outside of myself. It's like in reflection of or in response to something else, right? Um, and so be careful that we don't slip from one side of the, the spectrum to the other.